Thank you. Thank you, Rajagiri Media, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I'm Samya Borges. I'm an assistant professor in CHIPS, OPG Indian Global University. Uh, so I'll be having more perspectives from behavioral science and educational psychology, happen to be a teacher. So I'll be having reflections on following attention, concentration, and focus impact on learning, basically from behavioral science. And since as a teacher or since it's being my profession, I always find it difficult to uh, catch hold on students' attention and sometimes screaming or shouting in the class and finding ways to hold up. So, and we like a teacher, we sometimes, we like uh, depend on many type of strategies like as Shishinder sir uh, said about different types of stimuli, visual stimuli or auditory stimuli, how we are trying to catch hold attention or playing with the attention span. So we as teachers, I think we play a lot of tactics inside the classroom. And one thing is like stories, telling stories in between or having some personal narratives or reflections. These are some strategies to catch hold on the student attention. So even I find it interesting to begin the knot with a story. It's a classic story you might have heard of. Uh, already or you might be familiar with this idea of golden Buddha. So this is about a statue of Buddha. It was in a serene village in the middle of mountains and uh, this there stood a magnificent Robert golden Buddha statue. It was completely decorated with jewels, uh, gold leaves and crafted centuries ago by a renowned sculpture. So one day the village was facing an imminent uh, invasion and the monks who were residing inside the temple, they were really afraid that whether this golden Buddha would be stolen or destroyed. So in order to protect it, what they did or what they planned was cover it with thick layer of clay to disguise its actual value. The invading army may overlook this statue, perceiving it is something uh, very ordinary, something like a very silly clay figure, something like that. So the trick worked well and years passed the statue's true identity faded from memory of everyone even the uh, the sages who were inside the temple or the people who were in the village almost everyone so one day there uh, like a curious young monk visited this temple and he listened stories or instances about this uh, golden buddha from the elders who were there and he was like very much interested to find it out, like where it is and how to see the original beauty of it. So armed with his dedication and determination, he meticulously started uh, working on this, finding out this particular golden Buddha statue and he chipped away at the clay and uh, he like, he, he spent a lot of hours dedication and then finally he was able to come out with the real golden Buddha statue. So the villagers also by seeing after years, this original golden Buddha shining brilliantly in front of their eyes, they also become very happy. I think this golden Buddha or this the theme of the story resonates a lot with the idea of attention and concentration because as uh, uh, Sri sir mentioned, we are like we are aware about the amazing ability of our brain that is neuroplasticity and even from the behavioral science perspective, what are the special characteristics of this attention? But in today's rapidly evolving educational landscape, we are confronted with an influential or concerning trend, which is decline in attention or concentration or focus among our learners. So as a teacher or researcher from this particular field, understanding this issue from behavioral science perspective allows us to uncover its it is multi-phased or it has multi-layered impacts on learning and we need to explore strategies to address it effectively. So the foundation of effective learning, which is which actually lies in the ability to concentrate and focus. And this is what we expect from the classroom. So however, due to the proliferation of these digital devices or these electronic gadgets and the constant notifications which we are getting and the culture of multitasking all these have significantly challenged our students attention span and i believe most of you agree with the same like even not as like a classroom experience even at home how much time the children are like uh, uh, 
like devoting for using all these electronic gadgets. So from behavioral science lens, we recognize that attention is not a static trait, but it is a skill that can be cultivated. So the brain has, as I said earlier, the, this amazing ability of plasticity, neuroplasticity, which allows for the development and enhancement of attentional capability. So rather than getting worried about the limiting attention span or the shrinkage in attention span, uh, from the research perspective of behavioral science and educational psychology, we need to look for better strategies or tactics where we could actually finding the golden Buddha, which was hidden or buried in the soil, we could definitely work on that. So the pervasive nature of these distraction has created an uphill of battle for our students. So identifying all these issues and uh, helping the students are, are now, it's, it's a responsibility being as a research team or as teachers. So this decline in attention has far reaching consequences in the realm of education. So students find it challenging to sustain their focus during lectures or not even lectures, sometimes even while studying, they are coming and telling like they are not able to focus. So it has certain impact on their ability to grasp complex concepts. Later on, it will have its own reflections on their career plans, developments and things like that. Or or even it hinders their information retention process. So it entirely affects their academic performance and hampers overall learning experience. So what rather than getting worried about or accepting the truth that yes, the span attention span is going down, but we need to from the behavioral science perspective or from educational psychology perspective. Now we need to think about the strategies, what sort of strategies can be employed to combat this particular issue. So one powerful approach is leveraging the principles of behavioral science within our classroom. Active learning methodologies is something which we are looking forward to enhance this neuroplasticity, which is already like which which has already proven that the brain has this amazing cap capability. So where we are allowing students to get engaged directly with the material, either in advance or even through the class in, in uh, while they were in the classroom through active discussions or giving them context, case scenario context, something like that, or even making them engage through problem solving related to the content which they are having in the classroom or even practical applications having some sort of like uh, uh, a pre-design where how we are going to connect it with the application side the all these tactics these are methodological uh, applications which we could think of this can significantly enhance their focus and involvement and creating an environment, this is very, very important because most of the universities or classrooms are actually allowing students to uh, rely on electronic gadgets. Sometimes these are also part of their teaching uh, like uh, uh, tool or some, sometimes it acts as a teaching tool. Like there are instances where we ask them to use Kahoot or some sort of platforms where we conduct online quiz or things like that. But how to make this learning environment conducive to uh, and pivotal is very important. So minimizing external distractions, establishing uh, structured routines, that's very, very important. Even if we are allowing gadgets, how long and on what situations we are going to allow them to use all these, these kind of structured routines are very important to maintain that conducive environment. And we need to incorporate shorter breaks into their study sessions. This also can boost their attention span and can aid maintaining in their focus. But later Samia, on, by could you, uh, Samia, could you conclude uh, because uh, your okay, time okay. is almost yeah. So yes, yes. just summarize so, yes. what yeah. Yes. So in conclusion, the, the decline in attention, concentration or focus among students poses profound challenge for today's educational landscape. And by embracing this behavioral science and educational psychology principles, we have to implement engaging uh, teaching strategies. We can cultivate mindful practices or foster collaboration and we can empower our students to navigate this uh, technology induced landscape of distraction and optimize their learning potential. Thank you.